Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, we want to talk about non-unique indexes. In previous videos, we have talked about B plus trees and we didn't discuss how a B plus tree can store non-unique values. So let's assume we have this table right here. You can see that we have IDs from one to seven respectively. And for the column name or the field name, we have values John, Rose, Jack, and Samantha. As you can see, some of these values are duplicate. For example, John is unique, Samantha is unique, but Rose and Jack have been repeated in this table. Now let's say that for the current table that we have here, a B plus three like this is created and we can only see the keys for now in this B plus three. So let's begin by assuming that these names are unique. In previous videos, I have mentioned that for non-cluster B plus trees, I have decided that the value of each key should be the cluster ID or primary key in the table. So for example, right now we have something like this. So the value of each key is the value of the ID column, which for now we assume that is stored in a cluster B plus tree. In other words, this ID column has a separate B plus tree. And if you are looking for a row with name rows, we first look in this B plus tree and find that rows has the ID of two, and then look in this B plus tree to get the pointer to the data on disk where the row with the name rows is stored. Normally, if you want to add another row with the name rows, to this table, then our B plus three algorithm will look for the leaf node that should store the value, which in this case is this one. And after that, it sees that the value is already present. When the value is already present and the operation is adding the index, an exception will be thrown, which in my case, I have called it index exist exception. So if we take a look at this interface, which is our index manager and it only stores unique values in a tree. The add index method throws index exists exception when the identifier is already present in the B plus tree. A while back, I also decided to ask ChatGPT how to support indexing non-unique values using B plus tree. And I just wanted to get some ideas. It suggested me different approaches like linked list, bucket or overflow pages, record identifiers, duplicate keys, and index sequential access method, which to me, the linked list approach made more sense and was easier to implement. And we will discuss it in this video. But using B plus three with modifications and extending it with a linked list is not the best approach for all cases. We will discuss one more approach in this video as well, which is the bitmap index. Let's come back to our example and see how we can extend B plus three with a linked list. So right now in our example, the values are integers. And if you remember the concepts in previous videos, the size of our values and keys are very important when we are storing data in B plus three. As a matter of fact, the size of the B plus three node cannot change, at least in my example or the way I have implemented. And if you want to remember why, we can assume that we have a file that we are storing the B plus three in. And within this file, we have nodes. So let's say these are B plus three nodes. And we know that nodes have pointers to each other. So for example, let's say this node is pointing to this one and it is also pointing to this one. If you remember about pointers, they are a combination of types, chunk, and an offset. And the offset shows where the node that we are pointing to begins in a file. This means that if the size of the nodes change, for example, the size of this node changes and it gets bigger, then we would have to move this node 
and that means the offset of this node has changed as well. Then all of the next nodes also change their position. And we cannot see it in this example, but this node would also change its position and all of them would have to go further. And what this means is that whenever we change the size of a node, we have to find all of the other nodes that point to next nodes and update their position as well. Or in other words, we have to update all of the pointers that are pointing to the nodes after the node that we have changed. And for obvious reasons, this is not a good approach. As a result of this behavior, we may not be able to store linked lists as values of people as three nodes. So our solution could be to store pointers for each value. And these pointers will point to the beginning of linked lists that are stored in DB storage. The details of how DB storage handles storing binary data will be explained in next videos. But as you can see, each of these pointers points to the beginning of a linked list. And each of these linked lists are sorted and they may also include zero values or null values and I will discuss this later. So the benefit of this approach is that we know that the size of B plus three nodes will stay the same. We can calculate it once and it will remain the same because the value types are pointers. And as we have discussed before, in my case, each pointer is 13 bytes and that would never change. In case a specific linked list grows, we can just mark the old value as deleted and point to the new value. And this is a way more simple operation because we don't have to worry about the data that was stored here. We just store the new link list and point to it. So by now you may have also understood why we may store zero values at the end of the link list. It's just a simple padding for the data to be used later. And that will help us avoid deleting and creating a new linked list at the end of the file. So for example, in case of Jack, we have four more spaces to fill. And if a new value is added, we don't need to update this pointer. Well, this current implementation is not really a linked list. It's more of an array list. And in a linked list, each of these nodes would be pointing to the next one. And we wouldn't have a block that stores many nodes together, which in the case of linked list, when we needed more values in this node, we would just create pointers to the next node and this pointer would still point to the head of the linked list. But in my case, I'm not extending my B plus three with a linked list actually. And I'm just extending it with something like an array list in Java. But no matter how this list is implemented, it should always be sorted. In my implementation, I find it a good practice to always track the last index in the list. If the value that I want to add is greater than the last value in the list, I just add it to the next index. Otherwise, I will grab this beginning sub list or sub arrays and use binary search to find where should the new value get stored. As for the deletion, I can also use binary search since all of the elements are sorted and see if the value exists in the list and then remove it. Also adding and removing values in an array list means that we have to shift the bytes in the array list. And for example, if I remove the number 80 here, I'm basically shifting everything that is left over to here. So it would be something like this in the byte array. And if I want to add number 20 here, I would have to shift these values to right. So it would be something like this. Now I said that we can have number zero in this array, which represents null and only null. And you may ask the question that what if the ID is zero? For example, the table or the collection doesn't have auto incrementing ID and you can manually store zero here, which in that case, again, 
We could go back to previous videos where we discussed difference between null and zero and how we can represent a number in binary format and add a flag which determines if the number is null or not. But that is not the best approach and we will discuss that soon in this video. But for now we can change the definition of a cluster B plus 3 and have an hidden column. We can name it cluster ID. And all of the collections or tables, despite having a primary key or not, will have a cluster ID, which is basically hidden when you are getting the data or using the data, so you cannot select the cluster ID. But it will be a default B plus tree that stores all of the data in that collection or table. So even if we have different numbers here, this cluster ID will be used for non-unique indexes and any B plus tree that is based on the fields other than the cluster ID itself. And for now, I'm just guessing about this. I haven't implemented it yet, but I think the type of the cluster ID should be something like unsigned long or positive long. And in that case, these IDs could also hold the value zero, or they could even be a string or in any other type. So let's see our second way of storing non-unique indexes and we will see the importance of the cluster id in this case as well in our previous example we had a column called name and we could have duplicate values in this column but there was also a high chance of not having many duplicate values in this column now let's say we have a different column called is married and the type of this column is boolean so some of these people are married and some of them are not. Now the question is, if we would index this field or column, how can we store it in a B plus tree? We know that this field has only two possible values. It's either false or true. And our B plus tree would look something like this. Our B plus tree would have only a single node, which is the root node, and it's also the leaf node. And the values of the B plus tree, as we have seen, are pointers and the pointers point to the data in the DBS storage. And in the DBS storage, as we have discussed, we have list of cluster IDs. Now, considering the type of the cluster ID, which is 8 bytes, storing 1 million records will take 8 million bytes from this DBS storage, which would be around 7 megabytes of data. Also, the time complexity of finding a value in this list, in case we use binary search, would be log n, which generally seems like a fast solution, but considering the fact that we may have half a million of rows, it would take a lot of space and time to find and store a value. So let's see how we can improve this. As we have seen earlier, there is a different way of indexing non-unique values by using a data searcher called bitmap. A bitmap is basically a byte array where each bit represents a flag for the nth row in a table. So let's say that we have 16 rows in our table and our bitmap is size of two bytes filled with zero values. The zeros in the bitmap represent false and the ones represent true. So if we want to store this current table in this bitmap, we have to change it to something like this. So using a single byte, we can store is married values for eight different rows in this bitmap. And as you can see, this means that the cluster ID one has is married true, two is true, three is false, false, true, false, true, false. And we don't have this eight stored here, of course. Now let's compare the space that bitmap takes and the time complexity of finding a value compared to storing the same data in a B plus tree. If we have 1 million records, we know that every 8 records will take a single byte. Therefore, the space that we need is around 125,000 bytes, which is approximately 125 kilobytes. Compared to 7 megabytes from earlier, storing 125 kilobytes in any storage is way more efficient. So we could also simply store this bitmap inside the RAM. 
Also, reading or flipping the end bit in the byte array is a constant operation, so our time complexity would be of 1, which is instant. Now, let's see another example. What if instead of this is married column, which is of type boolean, we had marriage status, which would have the type of enum, and the values would be something like this. So what we can do this time is to have different bitmap per each status value or per each enum value. So we will have three bitmaps. And if any of these values exist for the marriage status column in a row, we flip the bit of the cluster ID of that row. So right now we see married for 1, 4, and 7. So we need something like this. The rows that have value single are 2 and 5. And the rows with value divorced are 3 and 6. Now let's assume that we can have a different enum as a value. For example, we may want to store separated in a different bitmap. And I could be wrong, but as far as I can guess, we don't even need to store an empty bitmap when we don't have any data. Or in other words, we can only grow the bitmap whenever we need it. So both of these three values are a single byte and the minimum value that we can add to a bitmap is a single byte to represent eight rows, but we can only add the bytes on demand. So we could, for example, have something like this. So at this point, it may be obvious for you when to choose a bitmap over B plus three. Whenever the cardinality of values are too high, B plus three can be a better solution. But when the cardinality is low, for example, when we have enums or booleans, Bitmaps can perform better than B plus trees. We can also use bitmaps to determine whether a column value is null or not. So for example, even in this case, we could have a separate bitmap that shows the null values. So right now we can see that this makes way more sense with null. And after this section, after the first byte, we either have a married status, divorced, we can also combine non-unique indexes and unique indexes in cases where columns only have unique values, but we can have as many duplicate null values as we want.